All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another amazing episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your boy, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with... Is this me? Yep. Brian Saber, Captain Cleveland, Browns, Cavs, Indians. Baseball starts tomorrow, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and we have back, you know, we, we interviewed her at the beginning of COVID. She is back again. We're getting ready to talk about some stuff, promotes and stuff. The one, the only, the incredibly talented, the sexy, the ferocious Crystal Bear Lawson in the building. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> well, again, thank you for having us on. I know we just got done wrapping up some, uh, some trivia action, and I know this was your first time playing Zero Dark Nerdy Trivia on Facebook Live. Let me get some reactions from, from someone that doesn't normally do the trivia thing. What were, what were your thoughts on, on trivia night tonight? I thought it was really fun. I, uh, I used to work at a bar that did trivia, and I always wanted to secretly do it, so I thought it was really fun. I thought I was going to ethically fail, but it's really fun, and if they're I'm glad there's multiple choice, and that makes you feel not so stupid if you don't know. <laughs> Exactly. We're all about this. isn't Jeopardy. You know, I don't want anybody to feel, like, <laughs> terrible. I mean, we've all been to those trivia nights. At least I feel like where you get like four out of 40 questions right and you start to debate like if you even went to like high school or not. So mm -hmm. I at least try to throw a couple softballs in there, you know, through, you know, a couple fastballs too, but at the same time, just try to make it fun. So I'm really glad that you got to enjoy yourself. Where, yeah, do I get to on. give my opinion? Uh, sure, I go. mean, if, if you want, if you really need, I to, mean, please, I, I think it's fun. <laughs> the, the host leaves a little bit to be desired, but. <laughs> Outside of outside of that, I think that it's a really good opportunity to bring our fans together. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And mm -hmm. like I said, the reason I love doing it, whether if it's if it's twenty people or twenty five hundred people, we all know that the that the mess that social media has been for quite some time now, yeah. especially during COVID, is you know I just want to give people a break and and, and entertain. So, you know, but, but speaking of which, Crystal, you know, I'm very glad to have you back. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what um, I know. I think we, we spoke back, I believe it was like the beginning of April, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so what you've had going on as far as your, your training and, you know, what's coming up next? Yeah. So since since all of this began, I moved back down south in in May. So that's been nice. I so I'm back at Jimmo here. Um, I'm started back training also some in Atlanta at Coon Ponds, which is being called boxing. Uh, so my local home team is Jimmo with Jeff Jimmo is my coach there. Amazing team. And then, like I said, up in Atlanta, I'm at Bangkok, uh, a lot of, of girls in the scene. So that's, that's really good for me up there. That's more authentic Thai training. So, you know, just this whole time I've just, I've been able to maintain my strength conditioning, kind of go to more of an old school Thai training when this first started with just more running, you know, at home workouts, even doing, you know, online classes and things like that. And just kind of taking it back old school and fortunate enough to at my strength coaches gym, I have my heavy bag there. So besides outside of sparring at the very beginning, not a whole lot had changed for me. Uh, I just, I kept my conditioning up in other ways and now I'm back sparring and just getting back to uh, full-time training. The next thing for me will be Thailand. I should be there right now, but you know, obviously right now with everything. So I'm just continuously saving up and seeing how much time I can spend out there. So I'll, I'll train out in Chiang Mai at uh, Bang Na. Um, I'm sorry, at Hong Tong. I, I had a, another interview earlier. Um, I stayed in Bang Na last time. I will be in Chiang Mai at um, at a gym out there, so that'll be good. And I plan to stay if I can, man, a couple of months and just train full time, compete as much as possible, man. If I can fight twice a week, like trying to get it in and just bang it out, get as many fights as possible. I got a question that I think is really important. And it might sound stupid to a lot of people, but um, so I have a little experience with Muay Thai. A, okay. One of my best friends growing up, he picked up Muay Thai in high school, knees, shins, and elbows, right? Mm -hmm. And we used to sit there when we were in high school and he would take this mallet and bang his shins 
to kill the nerve endings because you guys have to use your shins so much. What do you do to kind of condition your shins and get them in shape so you can, so you don't feel that pain because you guys use your shins a lot. Yeah. Um, that's a good question actually. Cause, um, so people used to have a lot of different ideas and when I first started, you know, coming from a more military style, there are times my coach will take a rolling pin and I still have it in my, uh, and like a trunk or something somewhere, but like a wooden rolling pin and roll my shins out. But, and yeah, that was uh, pretty fucking brutal. I guess I can say fucking here. I did, so it's too late. Um, but <laughs> you're you're good. <laughs> realistically, the bag is is all you need. Like kicking the bag repeatedly, like it, and and within sparring and stuff. I mean, your shins harden up. That stuff's kind of. It, those ideas are a bit, you know, outdated and kind of unnecessary in my opinion. Um, so yeah, just pretty much just kicking the bag over and over. Like you're going to callous your, your shins by doing that. All the other stuff is, is not really needed. Shins are still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I noticed on uh, your website now, you just mentioned the, 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 the uh, yoga part. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because I know you have the online yoga classes. So anybody, and, and I think you have two different phases, if I'm not mistaken, to where you have like a beginner and a more advanced. And I think there's a lot of people out there that have always been trying to get into it, but maybe, you know, for lack of a better term, embarrassed to do it out in public or whatever, they can do it out of the comfort of their own home. Um, you know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so while I was up in Massachusetts, uh, one of the things I pursued up there was getting my yoga certification, my 200 hour. I've been teaching yoga for a while, but I wanted to actually get the certification, really truly understand everything about yoga. So I did my 200 hour training there and I just completed it recently. So my website is lunabearyoga.com. So you can sign up for classes there. I teach yin yoga. Um, which is a slower style of yoga, more for your ligaments and tendons. I teach vinyasa, which is a flow practice. And then I have the option to do private sessions as well. So that would be catered to whatever a person needs. So yeah, I have a couple different options on there. And I teach through Ebb and Flow Wellness too. So you can go to their webpage and I teach there on Tuesday mornings and Thursday nights. So there's a few different choices. So I know that one of the things that you talked about, if you win the money, the 20000 for this contest is, you know, I think very admirable, right? You want to take some of it, you want to buy your daughter a car, but the other piece of it is you're going to use that $20,000 to fulfill your dream of opening a yoga, uh, a yoga studio. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, you got the certification, you want to open this, this, this yoga studio, like what's your dream scenario there? You know, I've, I've thought about it a lot and ideally what I would like to, to do is eventually move a little farther south. So Georgia, Charleston, within that area where I'd like mm -hmm. to open my studio. Um, I would like to have a donation based only studio. I want, I think yoga is all about giving back to the community and giving back to other people and I want it to be accessible to everyone because I know it is something that can be expensive. And so I want to be in a place where, you know, it is, it is donation based. So possibly the people that are, are donating more can help all the people that necessarily, I don't ever want to turn anybody away. I want everyone to have the choice to be able to experience it, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Cause I mean, I think that is the one complaint that, that I've heard from a lot of people is that the studios can be expensive, you know, and, and that you have to reserve your space and this, that, and the other. So being able to have community access to that would be a, a game changer in my mind, especially because nobody's really doing that. Yeah, there's, there's a few, I I've done a little bit of research. I know one guy that's done it and, and has been really successful. So like I said, when I first, right now, I'm just trying to get things going. But once I start establishing, that's definitely the, the route I want to go for sure. Nice, nice. So, you know, for, for a lot of our fans joining in, whether if you were here for trivia or not, this is Crystal Bear Lawson, fantastic, fantastic person. Um, I know you're trying to, you know, get on the cover of uh, Muscle and Fitness Hers magazine. So talk a little bit about that, like where they can find you, where they can vote, because obviously I want everybody that listens and enjoys, or even if you don't like our podcast, whatever, let, like, let's help you out to, you know, help you achieve this. Cause to me, I think it'd be fantastic to have one of North Carolina's very own be on this cover. 
Yeah, for sure. So the link is directly on my Facebook, which is Crystal Bear Lawson. It's also in my Instagram bio, which is uh, Ty Box Bear. You can go to their website, and I think it's just under MS Health and Fitness. So all of those are options. The links are on everything. You can vote every day for free. You also have a choice of doing a paid vote, which goes to the Wounded Warriors, which I thought was really cool. I just I, I just found that out a couple days ago. So I think it's cool that they're doing something that matters as well, obviously. Um, so, yeah, it starts out with a top 20. Right now I'm either in second or third. We're just debating that one. Um, then we'll go down to 15, 10, and 5. And I just want to keep pushing. And then when we, especially I, when we get down to that top five, like, everybody just like hit this thing hard and I think it would be cool for this magazine just because uh, several reasons like bringing in the 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 fighter aspect bringing in the yoga aspect being able to talk about these things um I don't know how many how many super tattooed people they've even had on there right um so I, I think it could be something different and I think I've got something very unique to bring to the table so I hope everybody goes out and votes and makes it happen no, I mean, you're, you're definitely right with a unique part. I mean, you're one of the kind, you know, the, for those of you that may not know the episode that, that her and I did back in April, the reason, um, one of the reasons that we connected, not just because she's awesome is because, you know, she was kind of re, not reaching out, but we, there's always going to be haters out there, plain and simple, and people that think that they can do something better than you. And to me, you know, the fact that you're not just MMA, like you're doing Muay Thai kickboxing, which is still very rare in, in, especially as far as the U S for, you know, for someone like you. And uh, to me, I think, I think it's an amazing feat to keep doing that and to keep pushing yourself. And, you know, on top of that, you are very unique. It's not like you were born with a silver spoon or you have someone famous that was kind of like above you doing what you're doing. Like you just came on this really, you know, if you want to just kind of like give a little bit of recap to the people that may not have heard the episode, just how you got a little bit into Muay Thai kickboxing and go from there. Yeah, I, I started in around around 2010-ish, actually maybe a little bit before that, to be honest. Uh, I watched a documentary on it. I had went to school for several different things, had a lot of different certifications. Uh, I am kind of got like a gypsy soul, you know, so it's all about, for me, I want, I want to feel like very happy inside with whatever I do, and, and I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. And I, I watched this documentary, I watched Master Toddy's documentary, and uh, Gina Carano was on that one, and uh, Felice Herrick. And I, like, instantly fell in love. I was like, that's what I want to do. I, I had no clue what I want to do. I was like, that's what I want to do. And I found a gym the next day, and I had my first fight after six months, and I've just kept competing ever since. It's it's literally, it's changed my life. It's changed my perception of myself. It's It's the one thing through my whole entire life that I've, I've loved and I've never changed my love for it. And it just continues to grow. That's awesome. It's really awesome. Say, but what, what do you got? I know, I know you got something in the, uh, <laughs> ready to go. I'm going to tell, tell you, here's the problem. Right? <laughs> so I wrote down, so I went through all your bios. I read a couple articles about you, all that stuff, which is what I normally do. And I had this whole list of questions. And then I said, you know what? What I really need to do is go back and rewatch that first interview. 70% of the questions that I had, Brian asked you in the last interview. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man. But one of the things that, <laughs> one of the things that I think is, is, is crazy, right? Like, you are very unique. Um, you know, you're, you're not sort of the typical, like, like you're a badass, right? Like you're not sort of the typical, it, there's this evolving definition of what beauty is and you're sort of taking it to this, to this next place. And I think it's outstanding, but you know, Muay Thai guns, right? Like you're shooting automatic weapons, uh, you know, crazy tattoos. Like you have awesome tattoos. Like, like, what are some of the influences for all of these things? Like who, who made you growing up? You know, like your, your family, your friends, your parents, uh, like, like who are your influences that made you who you are today? Like this, this, this trendsetter, this trailblazer. Man, you know, I don't know. That's a, it's, it's a really good question. I think it's just, it's a combination of several things. You know, I grew up, um, I grew up very poor. I didn't, I didn't have very much at all. I was picked on in school. 
no boys liked me at all. I didn't go to prom. Um, so I, I still have a couple people every once in a while on Facebook be like, oh, in high school, you were this or that. And I'm like, bro, like that was a million years ago. Um, but no, like it, my parents my, were both in, in bands and my they met when my dad, my dad's a drummer and he was looking for a singer for his band. So I've always been like heavily influenced by music for sure. So I was probably listening to like Blondie and Credence while other people were listening to some other stuff. I don't know. Uh, so uh, there was always that artistic side, but I didn't, I didn't really know much about that because I was kind of shy and I never did any sports or anything. And then kind of, I, I always kind of dressed different than other people. Like I have like patched pants and stuff. Um, but you know, I, right when I turned 18, I kind of started getting tattoos and I got really into Japanese art. Um, and there's a, a artist, Dave Fox, who's got some really good like depictions. So all of my work is Japanese folklore um, and legends. So I've got like the new, the kitsune. So they're just all, all this, like I said, they're all Japanese folklore. Like even the one I recently got is, is a bat, but he's also like a dragon. So everything's like a hybrid animal as well. So basically, yeah, just like my body is, is just a story. It, it is art and, and I look at it that way. Um, you know, as, as far as like, I guess I've kind of always been a tomboy. I'm an only child. So I did grow out, grow up out in the country. You know, I played in the dirt. Um, I made mud pies. I, so I've, I've always kind of had that in me, but it wasn't really until I, I really found martial arts that I realized like, oh, I'm actually athletic. I didn't know I was athletic until I started training and I was like, oh, you, you are. So it took until like my late twenties before I even knew that like that I was capable of all those things, and I got the confidence to start doing that and and really start being comfortable with like who I was and not valuing other people's opinion and and more valuing myself and like what I thought and felt, you know. God, that's awesome. I mean, because you know, you look at you look at your Instagram and your Facebook videos. You would think that you've been doing this since your yeah. teens. I mean, you see a lot of professional fighters out there, whether you know heavyweight, lightweight, whatever it is, they've been doing it since their teens. And I mean, I look at these videos. And before we really get into it, can I give a shout out? Who is the, I know you train with him all the time. The guy that but the was, guy that was that taking was... the damn kicks to the stomach that you put on TikTok. I mean, <laughs> that dude is a straight G. <laughs> That's, that's I, you probably would have flattened me in one kick. <laughs> uh, Brian's no conditioning coach, one of my best friends. He um he's been doing my my conditioning since 2017. Okay. I I he was in a, a another funny story. So I worked at Ziggy's at the time. I know you've been there. Um, yeah. I worked at Ziggy's and. Ryan was was in his band and he would come in and he'd be like, let me train you. And I would like look at the other bartenders. I was like, fuck this guy. Like, no. <laughs> and he would come back and he'd be like, hey, just just come work out with me. And I'd be like, no. And I would see him and I'd be like, this guy is trying to get me to train with him. Finally, one day he wrote me a Facebook message. He's just like, give, just give me a chance. Let me train you. Yeah. So I went over to his gym. It's Iron Pack Strength Gym. And I went over and like I said, I, I started training with Ryan and it was, there's not a lot of times in my life that I have been really down. But at that point when I met him was one of the lowest spots in my life and training with him was literally changed my life. Mm -hmm. And it was the best decision I ever made because he knows, dude, he knows what he's doing. Um, he used to be a power lifter when we talk about strength. He used to power lift uh, as well. He doesn't anymore. Um, but yeah, he just, he knows exactly what I need to do. And he knows how to train for, for MMA, for Muay Thai and whatever it is that I'm doing, like how to mix up my routine. And, you know, I recently, I started doing the whoop band and it was kind of, it's been kind of cool to see how we know what works but to actually get to see like, Hey, when you're done with your workout, this is exactly what we were seeking. Like, Oh, this is how much like anaerobic activity you want or whatever to know that like, that's actually what it's doing. It's been really cool. So yeah. Yeah. That's how that happened for sure. Nice. The fans got questions, man. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the big ones, and I, I think you may have answered it. That, this, this one was from uh, Brooke Miller. She hit me up earlier today 
And I sent her the link. She was like, oh my gosh, this, this girl is amazing, this, that, and the other. So, of course, she wants to know, um, you know, who your artist is. I mean, the tattoos, they are amazing. I mean, it, it is mm-hmm. like artwork. Like, it makes me, I'm, I'm not hating on my tattoo artist at all whatsoever, but you definitely had more of a plan and vision than I did <laughs> when I first got mine. So, um, you know, there's definitely been a few questions on who your tattoo artist is and where they can be found and, and just... You already talked a little bit about the inspiration, but, you know, just, just that. Yes. So my original artist was out of Atlanta. His name was uh, James Hogan. He did pretty much everything here and on my back. Um, James started to get – his eyes started to get bad. Obviously, you can't do tattoo with bad vision. So mm. I had him do some research, and we just started scouring the Internet for other people who specialize in Japanese art. and because obviously we are, it's very specific. It's my body. It's, it's a certain style of art that I have. Yeah. And we came upon a guy named Dave Poo, who I work with now. And Dave, he just sold his shop in Florida, but he is actually in Murphy, North Carolina. And um, do I keep going? <laughs> yeah, keep going. I think it's his dog or something. Don't worry about it. We're, this is for the fans. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, D- Dave is in Murphy, North Carolina. The name of his shop is Rockabilly Tattoo. Um, so he's on IG, he's on Facebook, but usually I'll go when out there's a Harris Casino. It's it's in the mountains, so it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. But I'll go stay at the casino, which is weird with the mask now. But so I'll go I'll go stay at the casino, go get tattooed all day, like hang out in the mountains. So it's nice. He's he, he has, he's really good with, if you have a vision, if I'm like, Hey, this is what I want to do. This is where I want it at. Um, just, just really flowing back and forth so that you're keeping your idea, but he's also keeping it, it, it real with his art and what he likes to do too. I like to keep it fun for the artist also, you know. Brian, you want to share with us why you're being so disruptive right now? So yeah, I, I do apologize. My dog started growling and I should have put her in my bedroom um to begin the interview with so i do apologize so or we can bring her on the episode i don't understand <laughs> i mean we are in the middle of covid so these are all <laughs> zoom episodes but that's all because she goes like you know you and i both own pit bulls it's either like a little growl or it's yeah she's barking for five minutes and i just yeah. didn't want her to interrupt you while you were talking so i apologize so i was not running to the bathroom i was running to close the curtains on my sliding glass door <laughs> so I knew right away what it was. <laughs> well, you, you know, you saw me going like this with the steps, yeah. and I'm like, come on. Well, so. I didn't think you were talking to Ashley like that, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to take a right turn here, right? <laughs> I, think, I think, you know, one of the things that's really important for us is, 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 is pop culture. Um, you know, you, you touched on music a little bit. Um, you know, talk to us about some other things. You know, when you're not, you know, shooting guns and – putting calluses on your shins and, you know, hitting heavy bags and all that, um, you know, getting tattoos because you spent a lot of time in a tattoo <laughs> shit chair, right? Like what else? You talked about music, movies. What are some of your favorite movies? You talked about, you know, Credence and that stuff. Like who's some of your favorite artists? Um, just talk about some of the pop culture stuff that, that, that we like and love and, 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 and kind of bring that into the episode. Yeah. Um, favorite movies by far, Kill Bill, um, Last Samurai. House of Flying Daggers, Ooh. No Mars of Asia. Um, those are always my tops. Um, Marvel over DC because yeah. I love them. <laughs> Who's your favorite Avenger? I just love Wolverine. I don't know who my favorite <laughs> Avenger is. I just want to be Wolverine. And yeah. if there's a choice, if I could be anything, it would just be Wolverine. I even like his daughter. I'm kind of obsessed. I have I have Wolverine's statue in my house. Awesome. Um, that's that's great. Yeah, so I, I play video games. I have um I like I pre ordered Mortal Kombat just so I could get like the Scorpion figure. Um so I'm kind of a creep about that. Uh so yeah. That's but great. yeah my favorite, I do I play video I just downloaded The Witcher. I'm I'm just I heard it was really good. It was ranked really high. So I'm I'm just kind of getting into it and learning it, but I'm I'm an Xbox fan. I know a lot of people disagree with that. I just love Xbox. I'm not a PS Same. person. Yeah, I love Xbox. I love Xbox and I love Android and I hate iPhone and I hate PS. <laughs> um, so 
<laughs> tell them, but, tell uh, them out there how you feel. <laughs> I'm telling how I feel. Um, it was, I was on Tomb Raider, so uh, I got I have Far Cry here, Tomb Raider, of course, Mortal Kombat, uh, things like that. But yeah, right now I'm, I'm trying out Witcher, going to see how I feel about that one. So I can definitely get in the zone with the, with the video games for sure. The Witcher is awesome. It's, uh, it's heavily involved. That's a that's a big game. It's a long game, but uh, it'll suck you in. So that's I look forward to the next time we talk, hearing about your experience with The Witcher because that's a great that's a great game. I heard that the storyline was really good, which is yep. something that means a lot to me. I can't remember what the one I, I downloaded was the other day. I'm just like upset about I wasted my life downloading it for like 24 hours, but which <laughs> I, I really did more research, so I'm I'm pretty excited about it. So, uh, you know, I, I asked you this last time, and I, I wanted to prep you for it to be ready. You know, I asked you who you would love to get in the ring with, whether, mm. you know, current pop culture person, someone from history, movie villain. I know before you were calling out some, you know, the girls that were calling you out on social media, and I tell you, that's one of my favorite sound bites since I started this podcast. And I'm like, this girl is real as shit. Like, yo, bring it, bring it all. If you want to handle this, we can handle this in the ring. But, you know, yeah. as far as, you know, it, like, like I said, fictional character, pop culture person, you know, someone from history, who, who would you like to get in the ring with for, you know, a couple rounds and you know, just kick the shit right. out of them? So I picked Tony <laughs> from Street Fighter. I picked her for multiple reasons. Okay. One of them because I love to kick and show, so does she. Yeah. Another reason being... There is one person, one in this whole world, another female fighter who is literally, there's nobody I don't like. And I'm being legit when I say that. But yeah. this girl has had it out for me forever. And dude, like, she was dressed up like Chun Li. So if she's listening to this, she'll know exactly who I'm talking about. So that's great. I don't have to say her name. <laughs> Also, so if I was in the game and I fought Chun Li, it would also be, you know, be killing two birds with one stone. Like I would just get all my dreams to come true at one time. So yeah, that's why I'm gonna pick her. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you're the realest chick I ever met. It's fucking great. I, I love it. You, I mean, you knock out two birds, one stone. A fictional character plus someone that dresses up like a fictional character. <laughs> that is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yes um so i mean crystal i mean anything else you want to you know just share with us i mean not just the the contest i mean obviously we're all pulling for you we want you to win but you know as far as what's coming up next i know you don't know exactly and i don't know how they're doing it as far as you know um uh, overseas with with the fights like they're doing with with uh you know ufc where they have the island in dubai or whatever this that, any other right. have they given you any kind of like uh like deadline or date on when things could possibly get back to normal to where you can get back in the ring or is it still up in the air everything is still up in the air and you know borders are closed right now so like in thailand they have started some fights back up it's it's pretty much just the thais fighting gotcha. um from my understanding so i'm i'm just waiting right now and as soon as the borders open you know whatever you have to do whether it be take the test or or even if it's get quarantined for 14 days I'm, i don't really i don't really care i'm just trying to get over there and you know start start making it happen so that's that's what's on the agenda right now if something comes up before that if an opportunity comes along i'm, I'm definitely willing to take whatever it is but that's what i'm planning for right now i'm, I'm training and i'll be ready for whatever so nice nice Saba, any other any other deep cuts over there on your end, there, brother? No, man, this was, this was great. <laughs> I enjoyed I enjoyed meeting you. This was this was a great interview. I really appreciate. Yeah, it. yeah, this has yeah, been me. fun. So, so Crystal, before we sign off, obviously, tell everybody again, you know, about the contest where they can find the links. Uh, for those of you, whether if you're tuning in live or listening to this on the podcast, I do plan on airing this uh, Friday at the very latest, which will be the twenty fourth, I believe um you know be yes. sure to tell them where to find you you can find us you can find her information on our social media but you know just as far as as you're concerned you know not just the contest but i know you just recently started up a tiktok um and all that stuff yeah. so you know where everybody can kind of find you at yeah so 
All of my stuff is under Thai Box Bear. So my Instagram is T H A I Box Bear. So that's my Instagram, my TikTok. I don't know much about TikTok, but I'm just trying it. And, you know, it's kind of fun and interesting, and maybe it'll lead to some cool stuff. And if nothing else, there's funny stuff to look at. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some really funny things. And there's pretty stuff, and there's animals. Yeah. Uh, my Facebook is Crystal Bear Lawson. And, yeah, the contest is for Muscle and Fitness Hers. It's to be, it's to be on the cover of the magazine and get a two-page spread. But the title is Miss Health and Fitness, so you can also look up all of that stuff. Again, you get one free vote every day, and then there's also paid votes, and they go to the Wounded Warriors. So those are the options for that. And, yeah, you can go to you guys' page and find me through there as well. Awesome, awesome. We'll hang out for a little bit uh, before we sign off. Again, everybody that you know is live right now on Facebook, thank you so much for joining us. Last chance to get some questions in. There was um, one question that I got earlier, and it was as far as just like your ultimate playlist. And I'm sure you listen to a little bit of everything, but are there like one to three songs that just really get you going? Like as far as whether if you got to get up and get going or, or at the gym or, or even bands that just like get you in the mood to get hype. I know that was one of the questions that I got uh, from earlier today. Yeah. So generally when I'm working out and I, and I looked this up, I looked at my most, my most played thing. So, um, Lil Wayne, 50 cent Kanye. Um, all of those were, were my tops. Um, it's a lot of that Eminem, Biggie, Tupac, all those are big. So those are, those are kind of my go-tos. It's, it's always heavy hitters. It's, you know, honestly, when I'm, I'm training, that's kind of what I go to is, is more rap and hip hop. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like we talked about Credence, Rolling Stones, people like that. When I'm, I'm kind of in more of like a flow state and, and chill right. vibe. I'm, I'm kind of down with that. So it, it, it widely varies. Awesome. Blonde, again, from my childhood, I love her. So it would matter. <laughs> Well, a girl after her own heart. Again, make sure you vote for her. The Muscle and Fitness Hers cover. Uh, all the links will be on the post for the video as well as the podcast. Like I said, this should be out no later than this Friday. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Big shout out to our sponsor, Andrew Newman, attorney at law, taking care of all your criminal, civil, and uh, traffic court needs in every county in North Carolina. You can reach them at attorneynewman.com. Big shout out to Yes Weekly as well as Zibster for our website. That's Z-I-B. S-T-E-R for all your website and SEO needs. Big shout out to Sabre for joining us. And of course, Crystal, thank you so much. And uh, we'll catch everybody on the next episode. Bye. Thank Do you. Do the double kiss, B. Hearn. Do the double <laughs> kiss. Yes. Yeah. Victory. And anger management? Fuck anger management.